Our facility received donations. Uh, we then sorted, filtered through items that were approved, unapproved, as we were trying to respect their religion and their culture as best as we could. Um, donations would come in, we would sort them by sizes in our building, and then we would send them to our HAZ facility where they would build clothing kits, and then they would hand them out um, to our guests as they were coming in. And now we have a distribution site in uh, the pods to hand out um, clothing as it's needed. We provided 35,000 clothing kits. Um, that is not including the clothing that we put out before we started making the kits or the clothing that we've given out um, since uh, stopping those kits. I believe it was 1.5 million in total donation sum, um, around 110 tons that was sorted and donated. We received donations from not only all over Germany, but all over Europe. We had Belgium and Turkey and bases from everywhere sending shipping containers, you know, eight car caravans full of stuff. And we had local, local stores and communities gathering money, coming and asking us, what do you need? What can we get you? And then coming in full force to supply us with what we could take at that time. And we had local, local stores and communities gathering money, coming and asking us, what do you need? What can we get you? And then coming in full force to supply us with what we could take at that time. So we didn't have a scope for how much we were really doing. We weren't focused on you know, trying to, 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 meet a, to meet a goal or, you know, a minimum. We were just trying to get as much as we could done with the volunteers that we were, you know, were, had stepped up to come and help us. So we didn't have a scope for how much we were really doing. We weren't focused on, you know, trying to, 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 meet, a, to meet a goal or, you know, a minimum. We were just trying to get as much as we could done with the volunteers that we were, you know, were, had stepped up to come and help us. But then at the end of the day, you would hear the numbers at our end of day meetings and it would shock us each day that somehow we had managed to go through even more than we had the day before and clothed more people than we had ever expected to in that day. So I actually came in because my neighbor asked me hey, um, I know you still have your moving boxes. Can you come and bring it? So it was already three days into the volunteer. Um, so brought the boxes in, and that was at the time they said, okay, no more boxes, because everything that got rained, uh, it just, the box disintegrated and everything got wet. So we just used the boxes as transport instead. Um, when I arrived on site, I mean, you could see the need for volunteers. Um, I had no idea what Sign Up Genius was, any of that. So I just said, okay, I got a couple of hours. What was a couple of hours ended up being stayed the rest of the night until I said, hey, we're closing down and then we'll start back up again in the morning. And then it, I just stayed the rest of the time. <laughs> Um, so the first couple of days I was trying to get the lay of the land. So I was more of a runner. Um, we actually, the neighbor that I was with, she was talking to the commissary manager. We brought commissary carts over, so that's how I started running from the front side of the room and the back side of the room. Um, so the front side would just be the sorting part. They would screen, sort, and then I would run or transport them to the back. And the back side was much bigger. They had tables laid out and labeled so that all of the clothes that were already sorted according to their sizes and stuff um, would go straight to that category. So eventually it got to a point where someone needed help in the back and I guess I don't know how I got myself there but I just ended up taking lead in making sure certain items go to where they were at. I would make sure that the front was communicated. That's where I talked to Big Mel um, about certain things and uh, say they're, they have a demand signal for men's pants, jackets, you know, all those things. And then she would communicate that with her front people. Um, so uh, 
pretty much that's what it was. It was organization and, and uh, communication. Um, so brand new to the base, I would say about a good couple of months. And this is our first duty station here. So meeting people, <laughs> it's different. <laughs> so uh, just to meet them in, in, in flocks of them, it was super nice. Um, talking to them on a daily basis, especially for the ones that kept coming consistently, getting to know everyone personally. So it's not just within everyone's unit. So it's everyone, it's a mix of stuff. So even high schoolers, all that. <sighs> it's making sure that we're all going for the same cause, making sure that these people, um, it's whatever the uniform people say, right? So <laughs> um, if they need this we're, and they say we need help, that's what we do. Um, so it's more of like not just the military support, but it's also for these uh, uh, special travelers here that also got uh, what they need and that they're covered for too. So I am the webmaster and also the person um, sharing the information on social media, mostly on the spouse page. And I collaborate with the first sergeant council who manage, um, the person that manages the uh, Facebook page for the First Sergeant Council. And we try to have the same information all at the same time and um, basically uh, pushing everybody to our website so that there's no mixed information about our needs and the closing and opening time. Gosh. Are you a civilian employee? Yeah. I am a spouse. My husband's Andrew Wilder, and, and he was the one who started the donation process. And um, I accidentally got pulled into this, and uh, I thought it was supposed to be just a couple days. And um, it became into a big thing, and I just feel like I need to stick to it and see it through. Okay. Um, so the other tasks that I do is when emails come in from the website or if there are questions from Facebook because at the end it feels like I was like the name that people would contact as a point of contact for just asking general question is this accepted is this not accepted where can I you know donate this and so forth so um, fielding emails if I receive something and it's not something I can answer, I have all the point of contacts. I have majors, lieutenant colonels, and my husband, and I would just forward them to who I think would be able to answer the question. But for the most part, they're general questions that I was able to answer, but that's mostly web mastering, um, PR work, and email responding. So the impact I see is that we're able to provide needed items for those who came from a place where, you know, leaving your home and you only have maybe a small suitcase or even nothing with you. And we're able to provide a bit of clothing, a bit of comfort for the children, a bit of fun. And hopefully that, that will help them during the waiting process to be able to go to their final destination. Probably the most memorable moment is during the peak time when everybody seems to be coming at once. I think at one point the one week was 20,000, 16, I don't know, a lot of thousands of people. And just the rush of trying to gather everything. And I think the best part was the community support that it doesn't matter what your beliefs are, what um, who you are, everybody's just coming in to donate to volunteer their time and just reaching out to do whatever they can to help people they don't know just you know our guests and that was I think the most memorable thing for me and personally just being to, able to know these people some of these people personally and making friendship. <laughs>